Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to talk about Peko Banyaya signing for two years or two more years with the Ducati factory team. Now, for me, this was always the factory teams and Ducati's main priority was to sign Peko as soon as possible to lock him in for as long as possible because, you know, he is the prize pupil within the team and he is probably one of the up and coming superstars of the future. You saw it last year where he didn't expect to be challenging for the title. He was challenging for the title. And this, in my view, is definitely a good move on him to bet on red for another two years at least. You know, he becomes the fourth rider to secure their place on the grid for 2023. Those are Marc Marquez, uh, Brad Binder and Franco Morbidelli, which I think that's another conversation that we will have in the near future about Morbidelli's future where does it actually lie um, but anyway Banyaya is one of the hottest properties on the grid right now so it does make complete sense for Ducati to try and uh, tie him up for as long as possible and I think he really likes the atmosphere within the team being honest he's always said you know um, that he's really happy and comfortable within the team and you know his headspace does seem to be very much so right as well where he's enjoying his racing and he's not letting the pressure get too much to him now i don't know um if he was in a very close title battle would the pressure get to him or not i don't think he's been really tested in that um mindset yet now he did crash last year but again i wouldn't really read too much into it because last year was not supposed to be a title run year and it did kind of manifest slightly into it. He was always an outside chance at it, but I think if he's very close this year, I think it would be a very, very different story. And uh, I think there's a lot more expectation on him and definitely a lot more expectation on him now that he signed for a further two years with the team. The only thing that it does start to question now is will we see um, the number two or the second seat filled um quite quickly or will we will it take a while to fill it you know they can't really um throw miller out at the start of the season you know what i mean it'll be just a waste of the season in in terms of that because you know miller wouldn't be motivated or 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 anything like that so i think it's going to take a while to fill up the second seat in my in my opinion but you know it's definitely one of the linchpin seats is what i would call it is that once that seat is filled, uh, we will know where the major players are going to move. So, for example, you know, if they do take uh, Jorge Martin there, then that closes the door um, for, say, Fabio Cuadraro moving there. Do you know what I mean? So, again, you know, I think it's one of those seats that's going to be linchpin to how the, the MotoGP merry-go-round but anyway, we will wait and see. It's it's good news for Peko. It's great that he'll be there for another two years. And uh, yeah, I will see you again in tomorrow's video. I just want to take a minute to also thank you for watching my videos and the support that you've shown so far. If you haven't subscribed already and you would like to subscribe, it would mean an awful lot to me if you did. I'm starting this channel realistically so that we can all enjoy MotoGP together with the aim of streaming a live video when the GP races are on.